Hello and welcome to um, Cove in County Cork on Cove Harbour out here one of the biggest natural harbours in the world the first thing you notice about Cove when you come here is how vibrant the colours of all the buildings are for example have a look across the road here So when the, the cruise ships come to Cove here, they berth just down here. Do you see that? There's a, there's a tugboat just there. Just behind that building there, the cruise ships berth in here. And in 2019, uh, over 100 cruise ships visited Cork. Um, so that would average roughly two, two cruise ships a week. So um, it's a very popular cruise destination here in Ireland, Cove. And then you have Cove Town here, which is just beautiful, I have to say, it's beautiful. Over there is Spike Island, and there's another island there that can be reached by a bridge on the far side of it. And over there is the Irish Naval Base. So naval ships are in over there. Um, and in the distance, in the distance over there is um, a big oil refinery. So there's two ships, big oil tankers in there now at the minute. So yeah, it's a, it's a big, it's a very big um, harbour, natural harbour. So this is called, it's called the John F. Kennedy Park. So it, it, it was in remembrance of his visit here in 1963. In June 1963. Yesterday morning it was lovely and sunny here and there was a good few people just sitting on the benches here, just chilling in the sunshine. It was lovely to see. So let's go up into the town now. Of course, the main feature that dominates Cove is this big cathedral here. You can't miss it. I think it's called St. Coleman's Cathedral. So we'll go up there now in a minute. I'll show you that. So this is in remembrance of the Lusitania. That was a British um, cruise ship and it was torpedoed on the 7th of May 1915 by a German U-boat. Um, I think it was 11 miles off Kinsale, which is also here in County Cork. Um, the sinking was a tragedy of overwhelming proportions. Although 764 passengers and crew survived, tragically 1,196 passengers lost their lives. If you're getting married, bridal spe specialists, sewing and alterations, court and making, over 20 years experience, house of marry, okay? The princess room. There's a famous Irish athlete, female athlete, uh, in Ireland called Sonia O'Sullivan. She's now, I think, retired, right? But she was uh, <clears throat> famous here in Ireland. So th this is a sculpture tour. She's from, she was, she was from Cove. Sonia O'Sullivan, international athlete and local hero, erected by the people of Cove and unveiled by Sonia O'Sullivan on the 20th of September, 2015. So that's Sonia. Now, I'll just show you all the things that Sonia won here. Um, the role of honour, she was 
1991 World Student Games, Sheffield, she won the gold in the 1500 metres and silver in the 3000 metres. 1993 World Championship Stuttgart, 1500 metres, she won the silver. 1994 European Championship Helsinki, gold in the 3000 metres. 1985 World Championships Gothenburg, gold in the 5000 metres. 1997 World Indoor Championship in Paris, silver, 3000 metres. 1998 World Cross Country Championship Marrakesh, long race, gold, short race, gold. 1998 European Championship Budapest, 5000 metres, gold, 10,000 metres, gold. 2000 Olympic Games Sydney, 5000 metres, silver. And in the 2002 European Championship Munich, 5000 metres, silver and 10,000 metres silver. Uh, Sonia was also extremely successful in the Grand Prix athletic circuit and at her peak consistently finished in the top three positions. So that's Sonia. There's a nice um, shop there. Lovely flowers along here. Right, so if you're planning on taking a trip out to Spike Island, which is over here, which was a former fort and prison, um, personally for me, I thought it was well worth a visit. It's, it was, I don't know if it still is, one of the top tourist attractions in the whole of Europe, actually. So I went out yesterday at two o'clock from here, right? And they don't come back in until half past five. So if you're not into old prisons and forts that's how long you're going to be out the island for but you can walk around the island it's it's it's, it's nice you know you, you can relax out there too so um if you want to get a ticket you get it here uh, the ticket was 20 22 euros so you get it there and then the spike island ferry comes in here it bursts here you see look just there of Spike Island there now look and there's the fort and you can walk all around the island the whole way around it if you want to um, you wouldn't think it but it's very very you have a big climb all the way up here to the fort that's the entrance into it here um, big big green in area inside so outside the fort here is all look it's all a le all one level the top of the wall and the whole inside of the fort is all about 30 to 40 foot down below ground. So in other words, if you're on a boat, anywhere coming in to um, the harbour here, you can't see that fort. <coughs> so you don't have to go to Hong Kong, look. You've got Hong Kong Kitchen here, Chinese restaurant and takeaway. King prawn dishes, beef dishes, vegetable dishes, chicken dishes. Welcome. Three to seven, or three to seven days a week. That's lovely, isn't it? All the, the flowers, gorgeous. I love the archways, look. The White Star Line, the largest steamer in the world, was the Majestic, come back. Southampton to Cherbourg and then on to New York. In uh, length, 954 foot, five feet. Breadth 100 feet, 5.15 feet, depth 64 foot. Um, so, Rob Roy Hotel. So, during the 19th and early 20th century, Irish emigrant farewell gatherings became known as American wakes. They were likened to the Irish tradition of funeral wakes where friends and family gathered to commemorate the loss of a loved one while also celebrating their achievements in life. For those emigrating from Ireland, the friends and family who gathered to say goodbye went through and experienced all the same sentiments, sadness and impending separation, but joy at the prospect of a new and better life. Such American wakes would have taken place on countless occasions in this hotel, including the period during which Titanic called to Cove to pick up its 123 passengers, of whom only 45 survived the journey. Yeah. Um, 
Titanic Ship of Dreams on a maiden voyage, uh, Southampton to New York, April the 10th, 1912. So that's saying April the 10th, right? <clears throat> I was just looking up there and it says April the 11th, right? So the Titanic didn't bert in here in Cove. It anchored out at the entrance to Cork Harbour at Roach's Point out there at 11.30 in the morning. And then obviously a smaller boat would have brought the passengers out to the ship. So that was the, that was, that was the last port of call before it went on its, on its maiden voyage to New York. And of course, we all know what happens. I think this is really cool, look. It's shaped like a bottle, okay? So it's anti-dumping initiative 2019. We are Cork, not in our nature. Stop dumping, very, very well said. So if you have empty bottles, you just put them in here. Very good idea. Right, just going over here to go into the Titanic Museum here on Cove. I've been to the one in Belfast. Uh, it's a fantastic museum. So if you're ever in Belfast, people, definitely take a visit to the Titanic Museum where the, the Titanic was built. It's a, it's a fantastic museum. This is, is it's on a smaller, smaller scale, but I'll go in and have a look at it anyway. Adult is 11 euros, child under 16, 750, student with ID, 950, senior, 950, family, of two adults and one child, 25. Family of two adults and two children, 30 euros. Family of two adults and three children, 35 euros. And it goes on. Family, two adults and four children, 38 euros. So there you go. Beautiful. So, under the terms of the 1921 treaty between Britain and Ireland, the Royal Navy continued to have ac access to the facilities in Cove. This arrangement lasted until July 1938, when the warship HMS Acasta finally sailed away. So, the British still had control of Cove Harbour until 1938. Wow, I didn't know that now. It's not just pretty, isn't it? Really, really pretty. I have to say, it's gorgeous. I think I'll just sit down here for a second. I think I'll just chill here for a, a few minutes. This is just gorgeous here, and I have to say, gorgeous. Yep. Absolutely lovely. No one else in the park here, only, only I. And uh, when the cars don't go down the hill there, it's just really tranquil. I'm just looking at some of the boards going up into the trees around here. Mainly crows, I think. This is a, this is a lovely little, little place to, to chill out and relax across from those houses. Nice little park. The sun is just trying to come out be between the clouds here. Yeah, I like it. It's peaceful. So this is dedicated to the seven signatories of the 1916 proclamation. Thomas J. Clark, Sean McDermott, Thomas McDonough, Paulie Pierce, Eamon Kant, James Connolly and Joseph Plunkett. Ireland unfree shall never be at peace. I only read a book recently about the 1916 rising in Dublin and those men there who signed that proclamation of independence and they were all like executed by a firing squad in Kilmainham jail in Dublin not all together all individually at different times which was sad I 
I love I love the designs of the houses, the way the bay, bay windows, and I love the fascia board on the edge. Look at the part, the design on the wooden timber. Look at the mould. It's not gorgeous. Beautiful. So this is the cathedral. Look at the height of that tower. I don't know if the GoPro is picking this up. And there's a lovely row of three-storey houses over there. Wow. And there's looking back down. Looking back down into the middle of Cove there. Beside the harbour. There's the bells going. So it's a quarter past ten in the morning. In the lovely Cove. Go and have a look. It's a huge building. I hope you can hear me here because there's a mad breeze blowing here now at the minute. So there's another view of Cork Harbour. Spike Island, beyond Spike Island, as you can't see it at the minute, is the entrance into the Atlantic Ocean. I wonder how high that tower is. I'd say it definitely has to be, I'd say it definitely has to be 100 feet or more. Definitely. Now, I don't know if the GoPro can pick this up, but um, just see these lovely houses here that curve around. So you have them and then it, it, it goes up the hill more, looks another house. There's, and then there's a quite modern building way up there. And it's a house. And I went up by there yesterday. And it's about three levels, maybe four levels of it. All big glass windows looking out into the bay here. So I'd say that's a very expensive home up there. It's Cove's oldest pub. That was serving drink when the Titanic sank. I don't see who this guy here is. This guy, <coughs> this guy here, right? <coughs> you have to remember that the British ruled Ireland for 800 years, right? So Cove, that I'm in now, under British rule, it was called Queenstown. It was only changed, I think, after we got our independence. But anyway, this guy, uh, was Vice Admiral at, RH, at RHS Stokes, 18, sorry, no, Vice Admiral RHS Stokes, 1855 to 1914, was the shortest serving senior officer to live in the town. He arrived on the 21st of April, 1914, and died unexpectedly just three days later. So there you go. So that's it from Cove in County Cork. Until uh, the next video, take care and keep safe. And stay tuned for the next video. Bye.